Okay, now let's bone out the front quarter, which includes the shoulder and lower leg muscles, sometimes referred to as shank. Start by lifting the front leg up and then simply follow the rib cage with the knife. There is no bone, just muscle membrane in this area. Continue lifting the leg as you cut away the membrane. Take the front leg and shoulder totally off so you can position it as needed for different angle cuts. First position the leg so that you can work on the largest muscle group in the shoulder. This is a bit more complex cut since there are mostly bone ridges to follow. You can still see the natural line in the muscle. Follow the line down to the shoulder blade and simply let the bone tell you where to go with the knife, just like filleting a fish. Again, a sharp knife is critical for this procedure, especially since you don't have much leverage. You don't want to have to work the knife to get through the muscle. The shoulder or chuck is not a prime cut and is used for hamburger, sausage, pot roast, stew meat and jerky. The shoulder muscles are long and thin, making it difficult to cut steaks from this area. Notice how he follows the line of the bone as he cuts. There really is no trick to it. Right down the bone. Also notice how he's holding the knife. He has his forefinger on the top of the knife, providing better control over the more intricate cuts that he sometimes has to make. Just keep working the knife down the bone ridge until the meat is completely free. But be careful. I can't emphasize enough that you need to have a sharp knife and you want to take it slow the first couple of times you do this so you don't slip and cut yourself. He's really doing some nice work getting all the meat off the bone. It's the ethical thing to do, and it puts more meat in the freezer. There. Good, clean, healthy red meat. Great job. Very little meat left. Here's where those convenient plastic bags come in handy. Finally, there's a small amount of meat on the leg known as the shank. Again, be careful not to cut off any of the tendon. The front or fore shank makes good hamburger or sausage. That's all there is to removing the front chuck and shank. All you have left is bone. Now, let's get the prime cuts that are sometimes overlooked. The tenderloins are in the rear half of the body cavity, on either side of the backbone. Follow the bone ridge and just cut them out of the cavity. Some hunters mistakenly leave the tenderloins in the cavity because they're not aware that these prime cuts are located here. They really don't look appetizing when they're in the body cavity, but they are considered the best cuts, the filet mignon. That's all there is to it. Next, we want to remove the back straps or loin muscle found along each side of the backbone. Your knife should stay in contact with the backbone as you slide it all the way down to the top of the ribs where they attach to the backbone. Cut the loin on the end. You're near the spinal cord. The spinal cord is one of the areas where the prions are concentrated. It's protected by the backbone or vertebrae, so as long as you don't cut through the backbone, there's no chance of contaminating the muscle with tissue or fluid. Just follow the natural lines and keep cutting away as close to the bone ridge as possible. So simple. And when you're done, you have some prime meat for steaks, chops, or roasts. You can get more meat between the ribs and along the neck area. Rib meat or brisket can be used for hamburger, sausage, and jerky. The neck can be ground into hamburger or made into sausage. It's the same simple process. Just cut along the bone and remove as much red, lean meat as possible. That's all there is to it. It really doesn't take too many tries to become proficient at this simple process. If you decide to process yourself, follow these simple tips. We'll start with the rear quarter. We'll illustrate with the meat on the bone. It's easier to see the muscle groups and, more importantly, the location of lymph nodes between the muscles. The process would be the same with deboned muscle. 
First, it's important to remove as much visible fat as possible to get rid of any remaining lymph nodes. The lymph nodes are found in the fatty tissue. The basic rule of thumb is, if it isn't red lean meat, cut it off. Next, separate the muscle groups into individual muscles if you haven't already done so. Remember to cut along the natural lines in the muscle. You'll find an occasional lymph node encased in the fat between muscles. Lymph nodes are small, gray, bean-shaped objects that reside in the fatty deposits in different areas of the body. This is one of the areas where the prions are concentrated in infected animals. Take care not to cut into the lymph nodes with your knife. Simply cut away the fat that encases the lymph node. You get the idea. Separate the muscle groups and cut out all the visible fat. Let's move to the front shoulder and show you a lymph node in this area as well. Again, trim off all the excess fat. Here's a lymph node encased in fat. Remember, even if you don't know the exact location of all the lymph nodes, by removing all visible fat, you will be removing any remaining lymph nodes. Okay, let's move on. There are a couple of other important considerations when processing your own meat. Like removing any oxidized blood or tissue characterized by a dry texture and a dark red color. And not keeping any bloodshot meat, which can spoil the surrounding meat if you don't separate it. And removing all the sinew, which is a silvery material that covers the meat. Okay, next, let's prepare the back straps. You know the routine by now. This time, you can peel the fat off. Now, simply fillet the meat, just like filleting a fish. It fillets nicely off the sinew on the bottom. Okay. You have the muscle groups separated and you have red lean meat left. Here are some general rules of thumb. Always cut your steaks across the grain of meat as shown here. If the meat is thin or has a lot of visible fat or sinew in the middle with an inconsistent grain, it usually makes better hamburger. Whereas the thicker, leaner cuts that have a straighter grain and are clean of visible fat and sinew are good for steaks. More specifically, the filet mignon, prime steak, is cut from the tenderloins. The round can be made into good roasts or steaks. You can make butterfly steaks out of the back straps or regular steaks if you want. You can also package the back straps in larger chunks for barbecuing or roasting. The shoulder or chuck makes good jerky, sausage, or stew meat. Their sirloin area makes good steaks. The front and back lower leg muscle or shank is good for hamburger or stew meat. The neck meat can be cut up for hamburger, sausage, or chili. Make certain to cut out the yellow tendon material in this area. Package your cuts using waxed freezer paper and keep it airtight as possible to avoid freezer burn. The best way to preserve your meat is to vacuum package it for long storage in a freezer. If you don't have this option, double wrapping properly in freezer bags works well. Mark the packages appropriately. And date. Place the packages in the freezer upside down so you don't get any blood or fluid leakage from the package. That's all there is to it. Proper cleanup is important. Prions are highly resistant to heat and ordinary disinfectants. The recommendation is thoroughly wash the field dressing and butchering tools, then soak in a 50-50 mixture of bleach and water for about an hour. Again, any saws or knives used for cutting through the spinal cord or cranium should be dedicated to that purpose and not used for other field dressing, 
butchering, or food handling operations. Wash your hands thoroughly when you're done. A second option is to take the deboned meat to a commercial processor. Questions that you should ask your processor. 1. What assurances do I have that I'll get my own meat back and not someone else's? 2. If you grind hamburger or make sausage, will I get my own meat back or will it be mixed with someone else's? 3. What procedures do you use to ensure that your equipment does not contaminate my meat from someone else's diseased or tainted animal? 4. Do you take any special precautions to sterilize your equipment in regards to concerns about CWD? CWD is a contagious neurological disease of mule deer, white-tailed deer, elk, and moose that produces small holes in the brains of infected animals. CWD is similar to mad cow disease in cattle and scrapie in sheep. Fortunately, unlike mad cow disease, there is no evidence that CWD can infect humans. However, this is still being studied. Evidence to date indicates that the CWD infective agent prion is concentrated in the neurologic and lymphatic tissue. Therefore, during the field dressing process, you want to avoid as much as possible the eyeballs, brain, spinal cord, spleen, and lymph nodes. Recent research has shown that CWD is transmissible through the blood of infected animals. This suggests that prions or the infectious agent, could be present in any body tissue of a CWD-infected animal. If you have an animal that tests positive for CWD, it's recommended that you don't eat the meat. If you do happen to down an animal with early-stage CWD, please know that there will be nothing noticeably different with the animal's appearance. As a matter of fact, infected animals may incubate the disease for three years or longer before they exhibit clinical signs. This is why it's best to test for the disease prior to eating the meat. However, this is not a food safety test, and there is a possibility that a negative test could be obtained from an animal with CWD. Contact your state wildlife agency for recommendations for disposal of meat from a CWD-positive animal. There is currently no test that hunters can use in the field. In states where CWD is an issue, hunters generally have the opportunity, and in some areas are required, to submit a sample for testing. Hunters don't have to be concerned about sample collection procedure, but simply submit their deer or elk's head to the state fish and wildlife agency's designated sample collection locations. The correct procedure for cutting the head is to cut down one to two vertebrae or approximately two to four inches from the base of the head. Avoid twisting the head off as it sometimes damages a good sample. Whether you choose to use a saw or a knife for this procedure, the tool should be dedicated to that purpose and not used for cutting meat. If you decide to, or have the opportunity to hang the animal, hang it head down from the tendons on the back legs so you don't get any brain drainage down into the body cavity. The brain is one of the areas where the prion resides, so this is a simple precaution that should be taken in a CWD area, especially if the animal was downed with a head or neck shot. Also, hanging your animal from the back tendons can have a tenderizing effect because it'll stretch the ham muscles, a major source of meat on a deer.